Hi folks, tonight we are going to do a quick build of a game called Forbidden Lookout, uh, which is a retheme of the game Forbidden Island. Um, many of you know Forbidden Island, it's a very popular game, it's been around since 2010. Um, it is a cooperative game where an island is slowly sinking into the sea, and you and your teammates have to team up and use your unique powers to find four treasures. And if you can get all the four treasures and get into your chopper and uh, get away from the island before all the important bits of the island sink into the sea, you win the game. So uh, I'm building a retheme, which is called um, Forbidden Lookout. And this is based on a video game called, um, let's see if I can get the name right, uh, Lookout Firestorm, I wanna say. Um, and basically, instead of an island sinking into the sea, you have a trail area, um, a wilderness area that is slowly being engulfed in flames. And um, two of the main characters of the game, Henry and Delilah, are lost um, in the wilderness and you and your team have gone in to find them. And um, you have to find clues uh, to their whereabouts. If you can find four clues and um, get into your chopper and get away before the flames engulf you, you win the game. Uh, mechanically pretty much the same, just everything is a uh, retheme. So this is the fire meter. And if the uh, flames reach this uh, uh, very unfriendly icon up here, then uh, you lose the game. All right, so I'll be taking you along as I build this thing. I'll be trying to explain uh, the techniques that I'm using um, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, what materials are we using for this build? So we've got our self-healing mat. We've got our cork back ruler. There's the cork backing. We have our rotary cutter to cut out uh, these pieces here. We have a corner rounder. This is the, the material, the item to round uh, thicker materials. This is a crocodile uh, corner chomper. For the thinner materials and cards, we're using our trusty Kadumaru Pro uh, corner rounder. So here are some cards that I've already made. These are part of what's called the investigation deck. And uh, these cards are actually one layer of plain paper for the front, another layer of plain paper for the back, and both of those are cut out and spray glued to some cardstock. Here's an example of the cardstock that I'm using. So this is a uh, pretty thin, I would estimate this is about like uh, 80 to 90 pound uh, cardstock. So 20 pound plain paper in the front, 20 pound plain paper on the back and about maybe 90 pound cardstock. So what is that? About 150 pounds. Uh, if my math is right, 90 plus 20, uh, 130. So that is the thickness of the cards that I'm using right now. And these have already been treated with some uh, clear gloss enamel. Here is the fire meter and this guy is on chipboard. So that's much, much thicker than the cards. This is plain paper that was printed on my printer here, which is my uh, HP OfficeJet Pro 8715 printer. What um, glue am I using? Well, great question. Right now I'm using this Loctite spray adhesive over here. And what enamel am I using? If I can just walk out here to my drying area, I am using Rust-Oleum crystal clear enamel and I don't know if you can see it it's pretty dark but here's some cards that have been treated and I'm waiting for them to dry so these are also part of uh, the investigation deck all right so that are uh, some of the materials and some of the cards let's buckle down and let's make some more cards shall so we? here is a uh, front back alignment technique that I'm trying so um, I don't know if you can see they're faintly but you can see the uh, cut marks on the, uh, this is the card back. This is the back of the card back sheet and you can see the cut marks. So I've tried to align them with the card front on the other side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to punch holes here, 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 and here with this puncher. And when I am um, lining them up back to back, I'm gonna make the holes align. And hopefully that is going to allow me to achieve good front back alignment registration. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so now we've got the four holes punched uh, into the sheets and into the cardstock that this front is uh, attached to. So the idea is once I put glue on this back um, and once I lay this guy down, I line up the holes here and there 
and the idea is that if I do that, then we should achieve uh, good front back alignment. So uh, let's find out if this All right, works. now I've glued the back on, and as you can see, uh, I have tried my best to align so that those holes are punched all the way through. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut these cards using a ruler and a uh, rotary cutter and then we'll see if our alignment method actually worked. All right, let's check in. So we've uh, started cutting and we've got the first two results here. So as you can see, the card backs uh, look pretty good, look pretty centered. Now let's see what the card fronts look like. I'm gonna say that that's uh, pretty good work. I'm gonna say that the fronts and the backs are uh, looking pretty well, nicely registered. So I'm happy and I'm gonna stick to this uh, kind of uh, hole puncher alignment system that um, I've uh, recently started using uh, for the rest of the cards. Now we've moved on to what's called the fire deck. This is the deck that's gonna tell you um, what locations are going to start burning. And uh, we're still using the same alignment system. And as you can see, our cards are still pretty aligned both front and back. So, so far so good. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna hit these with some uh, Rust-Oleum enamel. Uh, meanwhile, we've also got uh, some cards over here that are drying. So this is a different set of cards from the investigation deck and these have already been uh, corner rounded. So it's kind of like a tag team action as these cards dry the next set that I uh, finish over there, come out here, get treated with enamel, and so on and so forth. Kind of like a real. So the investigation deck is all done. And as you can see here, uh, we're looking at the alignment and we're looking at the corner rounding. And I'm feeling pretty good about this one. This guy is um, not bad work, if I do say so myself. All right, we're going to continue. Right through the magic of video, i.e. I stopped taking video a little bit. We have sped up time a little. And here is the last sheet of the fire deck. And we are going to spray glue it to this cardstock core. And we are going to put the card back on the other side. Once again, using our um, hole punch alignment method, which has been working out for us so far. Um, we ran out of our um, one glue, and so we moved on to this bottle. This time, this is the first time I'm trying this, some Gorilla Spray Adhesive, multi-purpose. So, um, we'll see how this goes. All right, let's check back in on our progress. These are the uh, character cards, or I'm sorry, the explorer cards. There are six explorers provided. They all have unique abilities, and they are thematic to... Um, the particular theme of this game. So for example, there's a firefighter here, uh, there's search and rescue, and there's rapid response, there's HQ. Uh, pilot is uh, something that was also present in the um, original Forbidden Island game. And logistics, if I'm not horribly mistaken, is taken from Pandemic, which is another Matt Leacock game. So those cards are done, and uh, those card backs are also pretty well aligned for the most part. There you go. And then this is our uh, fire meter that you saw earlier. And uh, there's no art on the back here. So the next task is I'm going to put this art uh, and attach it to this back. Once these guys are done and then our fire deck, uh, the rest of these are uh, still being um, uh, drying outside from the enamel. And the investigation deck is done. Then um, it, we move on to tiles. So tiles are the last step. Uh, in building this game. All right, now we have moved on to tiles. So this is the uh, top half of um, tiles. And uh, here are some artifacts. I'm sorry, these are clues. And we don't have the other side yet. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cut these down to size. And then we're going to spray glue them to the uh, back half of these. And then we're going to cut them with our rotary cutter and our ruler. And uh, that is gonna be our first set of tiles. Also, since we're on the subject, I am never buying this Gorilla Spray Adhesive ever again. Because as you can see, 
it sprays clumps, which I am going to have to blot with a uh, little bit of a paper towel because we don't want these clumps because they're gonna poke right through and uh, damage the artwork and paper of our um, printed images here. So uh, I am noticing that consistent behavior with this Gorilla Glue, so I am never buying this again. Uh, not all spray glues are created equal, kids. So uh, buyer beware. All right, we are pretty much at the very final step of this build. Here are the tile tops, which have already been spray glued to some two millimeter chipboard here. And now we are going to, the next step is to attach these tile backs to the back part here. And then all that remains is we get to uh, cut these out using rotary cutter and a cork back ruler on this self-healing mat. And then here is the other uh, front back of tile just waiting to be cut. All right, so it uh, doesn't look like we have much left to go. And here's a quick example of what these finished tiles are going to look like. I rounded the corners with my uh, Cropodile uh, corner chomper. So here's the Hawk's Rest tile, the unburned, and then the burned side. Here's Two Forks interior, unburned, and burned, while PD station, unburned and burned, and the supply cache, unburned and burned. Yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good about these tiles, and we just have to keep on going, and then the entire game is going to be done. All right, so we'll check back in.